We're now live on YouTube, Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Governess and Business on Monday, the 22nd of March, 2021. Good evening. Uh, item... Sorry, Mike. Oh, sorry, thought it said something. No, sorry, heard something. Um, item one on the agenda, substitutes. Do we have any substitutes for this uh, this evening's meeting? None received, Chair. Uh, uh, any apologies? Councillor Scullion. None, Chair. Councillor Scullion. And uh, do we have Councillor Smith? Oh, there he is. Good evening, Brian. Item two, members' interest. I'd like to remind members of the need to declare any disclosable pecuniary interests or other interests they might have in relation to the items included on this agenda. Item three, admission of the public. It is not recommended that the public be excluded from the meeting for the consideration of the items of business on this agenda. Item four, we have the minutes of the Governance and Business Committee that was held on the 18th of January 2021 to be approved as a correct record and signed by myself. Uh, members, do we have uh, any matters arising from the minutes or any discrepancies? No, no one's indicating. Um, could we have, um, I'm happy to propose that they are a true reflection of the meeting. Do we have a seconder? Thank you, Stephen. All those in favour, please show. Thank you. That's carried. OK, so this evening we just have one item on the agenda, on item five, which is devolution, uh, which is the protocol for the exercise of concurrent functions and associated statutory consents. Um, so, Ian, are you going to uh, provide us with a little yeah. bit more information or do we not need any more? Um, I will just introduce the, the item, Chair, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, and after that very uh, snappy title, I hope members aren't getting too excited about the content of, uh, of the report. As you'll see, it's a report that's been drafted to go to Cabinet uh, on Monday of next week. Uh, the timing of this meeting meant uh, that um, it needs to be considered uh, by this committee as well, just to ensure that if there are any uh, issues, any recommendations that need to be added, uh, then they can be picked up and I will report those orally through to uh, to Cabinet. Um, the Cabinet report sets out uh, the two items really that uh, were being brought to Cabinet attention. One was the fact that the order was made creating the Mayor or Combined Authority on the 29th of January of this year, uh, paving the way for the election on the 6th of May and for the transfer of certain powers to the, uh, the mayoral combined authority, as well as the um, police and crime commissioner powers as well. Um, it's section four really of the report that I think sets out uh, the detail and really sits behind the reason why uh, this protocol uh, has been arrived at. And it's to ensure that there is a process uh, for there to be discussion a partnership working across the West Yorkshire Combined Authority area uh, to ensure that the uh, the remit of the Combined Authority, the Mayoral Combined Authority, is is well made out, and that there is uh, the need for there to be uh, collaboration across regions, um, that is regions within West Yorkshire. Then that happens. Uh, the document isn't legally binding. It's a protocol or a memorandum of understanding to try and ensure that there is collaboration where possible. Um, it may look and sound uh, fairly legalistic. It's not meant to be, but there are certain things that it's required uh, to, to do. Uh, and those are set out um, in uh, the protocol, which is at Appendix 1 of, of the report. And um, attached as Appendix 2 is the, the list of functions to which the, the protocol uh, applies. Um, Chair, I don't think I can usefully add anything more at this stage, but I'm happy to uh, to take any questions, obviously. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Ian. Um, firstly, we have Brian uh, indicated that he'd like to ask a question, and then Mike. Thank you. Um, Ian, uh, having read through the papers, and I'm not sure where I've missed it, is the fire authority included in the uh, the responsibilities of the... Uh, not just the police, commissioner, uh, the police commissioner, is, but not, not the fire authority? 
No, the fire authority was never considered to be part of the uh, the mayoral combined authority. As you say, the the um, police and crime commissioner uh, functions mm-hmm. have been uh, subsumed into the mayoral combined authority, but not the uh, not the fire authority. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, Chair. It's it's not a document that gets the juices flowing. I'm afraid, Ian. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Three point two, uh, which is in the recommendation to delegate authority to the chief executive in, consult- in mm-hmm. consultation with the leader. Um, is there anything that that anything like that should be brought back to this committee to be noted, or do we? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm just. You know, if, if we're delegating authority, then what, what form of scrutiny or what form of checks are, are, do we have on that? It's a good question, Councillor Barnes. Um, I would say at this stage that uh, we are one of the last of the West Yorkshire authorities to take this uh, through this process just because of the, the timing of our, um, our meetings. And uh, all others... Uh, have approved the, the protocol as it's drafted. So there hasn't been any need for there to be um, any delegated authority exercised. It was only ever intended that that delegation would um, allow for a minor amendment. For example, I think that uh, in one of the authorities, and I can't remember which one it is, 3.2 has uh, had added to it um, in consultation uh, with the leader, and there's one other. I think it's the deputy leader as well has been has been added to that just to make it, it clear that there needs to be further member involvement. Bradford Council uh, was the first of the councils to go, and there was a, a word, a form of wording that was used at 3.2, um, which still has to go to its executive and uh, deals with sorry has been to its executive, uh, the equivalent of our cabinet and sets out a form of words which uh, seeks to just amend the protocol slightly, but that needs to be agreed upon, so that hasn't happened yet. Um, so I suppose the short answer to your question, Councillor Bonds, it, it doesn't need to come back to Governance and Business Committee uh, unless there was going to be a, a recommendation that you were putting forward that radically altered the protocol uh, and that that recommendation was subsequently agreed by Cabinet, um, then it would have to a very difficult situation to go back and, and, and discuss again with all the other West Yorkshire authorities, which, which I think is, um, is, is a position that we would hope we wouldn't get to. Okay, thank you. Thank you, um, Ian. Thank you. Uh, Megan? You're on mute. You're still on mute. Councillor Swift, you're still on mute, I'm afraid. That's what would get me out of trouble, shouldn't it? <laughs> May I okay now? Yeah. We can hear you now. <laughs> yeah. I... Shut up. Um, yeah, I, I was never in favour of an elected mayor. Um, uh, now we've got an election for one, you know, which is very good. So you change your mind, don't you? Um, I was always taught that devolution came from the top down to other places. And this seems to be devolution that takes off councils and different things like that. So, you know, it's, well, I don't know. Um, It might be really good, but I don't think it will. Um, Where do I want to go now with it? I might have missed it, Ian, but any any council representation on any of these things, do do we appoint at the AGM like we do for internal ones? We do, Councillor. Um, I should should perhaps add that um, the indications are that the scrutiny functions to be undertaken by the, the combined authority will be uh, significantly enhanced from those that exist currently. Uh, there's talk of, of increasing the number of, uh, of scrutiny uh, panels or scrutiny boards. Uh, so those will be appointed to, as you say, at, uh, at annual council, uh, together with um, the appointment of, uh, by convention, the leaders of the West Yorkshire authorities to be 
uh, participants in the in the mayoral combined authority. Okay, thank you, thank you for that, Ian. Thank members, you. Uh, members, out, oh, James, and thanks. Yeah, um, I mean, in, in a way, this is like our little version, isn't it, of the Northern Ireland Trade Protocol Agreement or what have you, in that it's a way of hopefully resolving disputes that don't arise. <laughs> But it gives you a mechanism between the different local authorities to um, talk through things and resolve things where there are uh, difficulties. And it's one of those documents which is probably, or well, hopefully it's never even going to be used and it's probably going to be dead boring most of the time. But, and there is a bit of a but here, there, there could be a situation where it's actually something highly politically contentious uh, and there's a falling out between councils and it's a real, you know, bun fight over something like spatial planning and the mayor's plan or something you can kind of imagine some kind of situation could arise um and and so you know this provides a, a way of dealing with that and that that that's fine i i guess you know the point that um perhaps barnes made about the um revision of it without members having a saying that I, I can kind of see the the point he makes about just you know there's minor changes that's fine, but the clause doesn't say just like you know ed editing or drafting changes or minor ones. It actually gives quite a large amount of power for um, chief executives to change them without kind of member without member overview. Um, so I guess my questions were like, who has to agree this document? Is it a document that will go to council because it's been signed on behalf of the authority, or is it a, a document which will just go? from the, the cabinet of the, of the council and then I guess can't we just put 6.2 to include like the leaders as well because they are the you know the political representatives of the people who will happen to resolve these disputes as well. Yeah in answer to Councillor Baker's question it, it, it's a decision for for cabinet um, it was felt as in other West Yorkshire authorities that there needed to be a, a step before that for uh, the equivalent of our governance and business committee within uh, Wakefield, Bradford, Kirklees and, and Leeds, et cetera, to have a look at it uh, and recommend to Cabinet uh, any additional provisions that were thought uh, necessary. Um, perhaps as a way of reassurance to Councillor Baker, if, if there was a request or a review that there was to be um, a change to the protocol, um, in order, in order for that to be a document that's then agreed across the whole of West Yorkshire, it, it couldn't be unilaterally changed. It would have to have that agreement. So the authority is, is there just to deal with a minor administrative change. It, it isn't there to deal with substantive changes, which would require um, uh, agreement across West Yorkshire for the document to be one that is, um, is agreed by all. It, it can't just be unilaterally amended. Yeah, no, I understand that point. It needs all of the um, the chief executives to agree. It, but the, the, the thing I was saying was, it's not um, you know, it's not the council leaders, is it? It's the, it's the chief executives of the council, and actually, it's the council leaders as the elected members who are the ones who are you know ultimately politically responsible for you know resolving those functions where we we work together. Where if there is a dispute, it will be a political dispute as well. So, you know, I, I'd like to see it. You know, six point two changes to say, and with um, leaders of the council as well. Unfortunately, Councilor Into Baker, our, our constitution doesn't allow that. It doesn't allow an individual cabinet member to uh, make an operational decision. We have a collective cabinet uh, responsibility. That's why every delegate of every cabinet um, decision that requires there to be a further. Um, step in the process delegates authority to an officer in consultation with so that's the same across um, the whole of the West Yorkshire area where they don't have uh, individual decision making so uh, this is following the, the process that I'm afraid that it has to follow. Yeah well I'd, I'd like it then to be changed by to to say that it has to come back for agreement of, of the cabinets of councils. I mean per personally I'd rather this was done by full council because it's been signed on behalf of uh, the whole council and you know I, I personally don't agree with the cabinet system or just seven councillors agreeing to things about the whole council having to say on it but it could at least come back to 
cabinet in the same way as we've looked at it now, because otherwise you have a situation where we all, the members agree this, and then they grant authority to just the chief executives of the councils to change how the councils work together and the agreements the councils have to work together and, and, and the kind of memorandum by which we're going to resolve disputes without any members having a say in that in that change. And I, I absolutely 100% believe in when you <coughs> said it's only going to be minor changes, but that that's, you know, personal assurance by one officer of the council and actually in five ten years time you don't know that different officers of future councils might might change it in another way without members having to say so okay that's my concern yeah i absolutely understand councillor baker's point of a further reassurance that i can give i mean what what governs the relationship between the west yorkshire authorities and the mayoral combined authority is is the, is the parliamentary order that is the document that that sets out the parameters of the power to be exercised by whom, by the either by the mayor or, or by uh, a, a constituent council. This protocol really tries to um, put a process in place to facilitate um, the process through which those decisions are to be taken. Um, it, it doesn't really, well, it doesn't give any power at all to to go outside of that order in a way that that would that would uh, result in there being a significant or any change in fact from the, um, right. the very strict orders that, that that are set out in that that uh, parliamentary order so okay. would i be if would i be correct on sorry if you don't mind for you chair would i be correct understanding then that like a cabinet of a constituent council of a combined authority could say actually we're going to ignore what the memorandum of understanding says and we're just going we've interpreted it in terms of what the parliamentary order says and if this is just a memorandum of understanding or are kind of cabinets then bound by it once it's agreed well, well, well technically no because it isn't legally binding what it what it seeks to do as i said in my introduction is to to ensure where there's a need for there to be cross-border collaboration cross-border decision making then there's a process that's undertaken to try and achieve that. Um, there will be many decisions that continue to be taken by each constituent council that have no bearing on our neighbours and those will still remain within each, each council to, to, to undertake. Um, but obviously, with the mayoral combined authority, with devolution, there comes a um, sizable amount of uh, funding that needs to be spent uh, across across the region and inevitably there are going to be um, projects that require there to be close cooperation and decisions taken uh, which affect um, neighbouring authorities equally and therefore there needs to be some process in place to say how are we going to arrive at uh, those decisions bound by the fact that what the order says is what we're allowed to do but obviously there are uh, decisions that we need to be taken around the edges of those decisions to ensure that they're implemented as, as, as best as possible. Uh, and that's the protocol that's in place to try and make sure that there is a recognition between um, councils that there needs to be um, discussion, partnership, working. A lot of these things will, will be ironed out way before they ever get to the point where there's a, a, a potential dispute about them because uh, it'll be working on the processes that are already in place uh, by the combined authority, which has been in operation for a number of years now. Um, and, and going back to the point, I mean, this, this committee can make recommendation uh, to cabinet. Um, ultimately, it's for cabinet to decide uh, how it uh, approves the protocol and what, what delegated authority it, it, it agrees to implement or agrees to give. Uh, but this committee can um, pick up Councillor Baker's point uh, and recommend that to Cabinet if it so wishes. Okay, <clears throat> thank you for clarifying, Ian. James, if you wouldn't mind if we'll just rest that for a moment and I'll bring Stephen in and then we'll, we'll come back to it if that's okay. Stephen, if you want to, you're on mute as well. Um, Chair, I think <laughs> Councillor Dacre was ahead of me. I don't mind. Uh, it, it, it's fine. Uh, Coun Councillor Dacre is not a member of the committee, so I'll, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll bring her in at the end if that's okay. Okay, thank you. Um, well, just a few points to make about this. I, I do know that um, a tremendous amount of work has gone into it. You know, I, 
I, I sit with the um, combined authority board as uh, for political balance. So I've heard some of these arguments before, uh, but you know, it's a lot of work and it was new to everybody. And I think there's a general feeling that it is it, probably going to evolve, you know, over the years. There'll be nuances that uh, nobody could have anticipated. Um, and I think with every contract, and in this case, a protocol, by definition, when you draw up contracts, there's optimism on both sides that you won't need the paperwork. And as somebody said, you know, all the boring stuff. But you do need all the boring stuff if things go wrong. And that's why we have uh, legal teams and, and contracts drawn up in the way that they are. So a lot of work's gone into it. But I do sense from the comments that I've heard this evening is uh, since in 3.2, it refers to a process of uh, being delegated to the, I think it says, the, the, the chief exec in consultation with the, the leader. And I think, um, Ian, Ian Hughes, I think you said that one of the other councils had um, suggested that it was the leader and maybe the deputy leader. And, you know, and James has suggested it might be the uh, chief executive and, and the cabinet. Um, my understanding is that we, we, we make recommendations uh, to the cabinet about this matter. And if there are any concerns that it's just leaving too much power with the chief exec, we'll, we ought to be able to say an alternative that we recommend. And I would certainly be relaxed about um, adding something to it to just strengthen the involvement of the elected members. I think that that's the right thing to do. Whether cabinet accepts it or not is up to them. But um, take James's point, indeed I do. And um, why not? If, if, if another council has said they want a different way of working, whoever it was, if they said the leader and the deputy leader, well then surely, Chair, it would be up to us to determine what we should recommend, whatever that might be. That might not be possible, uh, Ian. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Ian, do you want, can you respond, please? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. As I've said, this, this, it's for this committee to, to make a recommendation uh, to Cabinet. Uh, ultimately, Cabinet is the decision-making uh, body for uh, this item. This is only a, a consultation process, a, a recommendation process. Mm -hmm. um, so it can go forward, subject to there being um, a, a, an approved position from the committee. Um, and it will be um, dealt with at Cabinet uh, on the 29th. OK, thank you. Um, Megan, um, is your hand still up from previous or is it up again? If it is, you're welcome to speak, but you're on mute. I think I'm all right. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear, yes. I, I wasn't sure whether your hand was still up or it was up again. Yes. No, no, it was. Um, this has got nothing to do with the individual, but some people around this will say table. Um, know that I wasn't very on and health. So it's chief set of the council is that for health. And then if he's got to take on uh, you're breaking up me then. I'm not sure if everybody else is having difficulty hearing you as well. Right, sorry. <laughs> try again, try, yeah. try again. Never mind. Are you sure? I mean, they're all breaking somewhere along the line. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Mike, do you want to come in next, please? Uh, yes, please, Chair. I, I think... I think where I was coming from is, is is that if from what Ian's saying is that we need to have operationally we need to delegate that authority that's fine but I just think we need to ensure that there is some mechanism that any changes to the protocol are then reviewed with an ability with an ability of a the, uh, um, of the council to make those to 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 
um, review those changes and if necessary, revert them back to the original. And I, and I think that's really what I, where I think I, I would like to see some changes into this recommendation is that I think operationally it's going to be very difficult if every single, every single change has to come back to this committee mm -hmm. and cabinet and council. But if we have the authority to make it, but then review it afterwards is, is, is I would be comfortable with. Okay, thank you. Um, members, any further further comments or questions? I mean, just... If, yes, James. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it requires like a resolution of this committee because we're just making a recommendation anyway. So you could almost just ask for our comments to be noted in the minutes and then make them at Cabinet and it would probably have the kind of same effect. And I know that um, uh, we've got a Cabinet member here listening in and probably will be feeding back to, to her Cabinet colleagues Anyway, but I think that's suggested there by Councillor Barnes about having some way in which if changes are made, that then you know the cabinets of councils can review those changes and always put in put in for something else to happen would be a good one. Or for you know the overview and scrutiny committees of the combined authority to have a, a role in um, kind of reviewing changes to it. I mean, it's one of these things that's we're probably just like, you know, it's never going to be an issue. And but if it were an, <laughs> if it were an issue, it'd be quite a big one. Yes, yes, it's like, absolutely. It's like, it's like your, um, you know, like your council group standing orders. You hope you're never going to have to uh, go through them with tooth now, but then the wrong time that something goes wrong, mm. you, know, you need to have them in good order in order to resolve disputes. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'll just, I'll just bring Councillor Dacre in at this point then, and then we'll, we'll just have a further discussion with Ian about how we can just make a few amendments of words. Yes, thank you. And thank you for all the views that I've heard. I think the difficulty is, Councillor Baker, that we would need to know what the view of the board was, because I've heard different options. There's two options going at the moment, or even three possibly, that cabinet's involved, deputy leader's involved, that it gets referred back after this mm -hmm. is made. And so we would, you could, I suppose, frame it in such a way that any one of those options we consider, but I don't know whether you'll feel that you want to settle on a, on a view between you all. I, I think, um, I'm not sure the relevant place to look at it would be the mayoral authority scrutiny boards because it's really about, although they're trying to make those, the beefing those up, I'm not sure that, that they want to be looking at the relationship within an individual council, which is what this would be about. And the only other thing I would say is that it isn't just the chief executive. Um, he is supposed to consult with the leader. Um, that's what it says. And so there is that involvement of elected members in the person of the leader, who is obviously an elected member. And I, I can appreciate that some councils might have wanted to um, ex, um, extend that to the deputy, but again, I'm not sure how often that would obviously often make a substantial difference in terms of views, it's likely that the leader and the deputy leader are going to share a view and therefore it's not really going to necessarily extend any sort of consultation. So I think there is a legal, that there is a, an element of um, elected representation there, but I, I just think if you, it might help us if you settled on what you thought we you would like us to consider. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Stephen, do you want to come in? Thanks, Chair. Yeah, I think uh, that there are three possibilities mm -hmm. that are discussed. I think the one that we might consider that we could reach agreement on, perhaps, is uh, Councillor Barnes' view that, um, that, yes, by all means, go ahead. Our recommendation to Cabinet could be, you know, we accept the terminology that, that is in 3.2, um, but with... Um, some some arrangement that in the event of the delegated powers being used, they could potentially come back and be discussed by full cabinet or some other mechanism. I think that the the other mem the other councillors that are not on the cabinet um, might feel a bit more comfortable about this if uh, there was such an inclusion. Okay. So, <clears throat> James, would that be would that be going far enough as to what you were asking for? Yes, no, I'd, I'd be happy with that. I guess it'd be something like a you know six point three, um, you know, 
or he provided authority to constituent councils may revise this protocol from time to time. Uh, so there's that bit provided such revisions are agreed in writing by the managing director of the combined authority and the chief executive of each constituent council. Then you'd have something like a 6.3 afterwards saying, um, well, I mean, I guess it does say 6.1 above it, it does say that the, that the councils can agree to review this, agree to review this protocol annually anyway. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's covered in that. I kind of like, you know, reading that bit, I, I am then kind of thinking, well, if you're, if you're reviewing it annually anyway, do you really need a separate provision to review it again after it's been, <laughs> been revised? Because you're going to be reviewing it anyway annually. So as long as that, you know, what do other members think about that? It does say okay. 6.1, doesn't it, Ian? The combined mm -hmm. authority and the constituent councils agreed to review this protocol annually. Mm -hmm. It does, any. Councillor Baker, you're absolutely right, yes. So I think if it has got that, then that, that probably does satisfy. Okay. Um, my concerns. Chair, chair I, I, think, I think once, sorry to interrupt, I think whilst um, Councillor Baker's right, I just think if it's annually and we're not, and, and those changes have not been, and have not been brought back to us, then I just think that, that may, maybe just to, to be brought back to Governance and Business Committee for to be noted so that we're aware of it, so that when it is reviewed annually we've had the chance to look at them on an ongoing basis mm -hmm. so so really it's more just no, yeah maybe this noted. Can it, is, is that any amendment any changes are brought back to this committee to be noted we're then made aware of it so that when we come to the annual review james we're, it's it's not been sprung as an 11th hour surprise in us i'm mm -hmm. not saying it would be sprung as an 11th hour surprise but you know what i'm <laughs> coming from yeah. okay mm -hmm. so, so then all you need to do is per and you know and uh Councils notified of and overview and scrutiny notified of changes at the end of 6.2, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. does, does that sound okay, Ian? That sounds sensible enough to me. I mean, there are other other reports that we that we note throughout the year, aren't there? It's more you're yeah, absolutely fine. I mean, as part of that annual review process, this 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 committee can can be fully appraised of of any proposed changes before mm -hmm. it's uh, it's dealt with by cabinet. Yes, absolutely fine. Okay, right, great. Members, uh, any further comments? Okay. Well, shall we just take a vote? Are we, are we all happy with um, with the changes? Do you want to just uh, show hands? Okay, that's carried. Thank you, and thank you, thank you, Ian, for going through that. Well, that brings us to the end of our our meeting for this evening. So, thank you all for attending, and. Uh, Hopefully see you all again soon. Great, thank yeah, you, before you go, um, mm -hmm. can I just point out to your fellow members, I think this is your last meeting as chair of this uh, committee. I was just about to say that, Ian. Yes. It is my yeah, last and your one. Yes. It is my last one. And I'll miss this committee. I've loved this oh. committee. I know, I've been on it a long time. And yeah, eight years, I think I've been on it. Wasn't on in my first year. But thank you, thank you for looking after me so well during this time. Uh, thanks for all your efforts, uh, chairing it, Lisa. It's been really appreciated. You've done oh, thank you, James. Mm -hmm. Lisa, yeah. I've uh, I've only been a member for a short time, but the meetings have been extremely well chaired. Mm. It's, a, it's a good natured, oh, kindly um, yeah. committee. So thank you very much for all your efforts. Oh, Great. thank you, Stephen. Thank you, much appreciated. Thank you, thank you very much, indeed. Yeah.